And with a poll in the offing, I spoke earlier to two people who know the WA political scene inside out. Former senior Labor Minister and power broker Jim McGuinty and one-time Liberal leader and senior minister Barry McKinnon. Welcome to you both. Um, now, first to you, Barry. You're involved in the Liberal campaign for the marginal seat of Hasluck. What are some of the key issues that are going to be impacting on people's votes in, in August? The polling tells us right across Australia and in Hasluck that it's the normal day-to-day -day issues you'd expect in most campaigns. Law and order, which is a key issue, has been in most state campaigns, as Jim would tell you, for the last probably five or ten years. It's still a key issue, not a federal issue, but nonetheless it hits the voter. Uh, secondly, boat people. Boat people was a crucial issue in the polling I've seen, hence Gillard had to act on that. Mm. And thirdly, it will be the general issues. The mining tax issue was a key issue, of course, in WA. Not as big an issue now, but I don't think that's quite dead yet. On a broader topic, how do you think people are receiving Julia Gillard as PM? I think there's been a fundamental shift. People are now engaged, they're listening, they're interested. And I think they're, they're starting to warm to Julia Gillard. It's too early. She's only been the Prime Minister for one month. But I'm sensing now that her style of speaking is very engaging. You can understand what she's saying. Uh, she's intelligent. She listens to people. She resolves issues. And uh, I think the public are liking that. Mm. Uh, one thing I took from the interview with Bob Hawke and Blanche this week on the 7.30 report was about um, Hawke talking about being an inclusive leader, but particularly using your ministry. And I think we've sort of probably seen more of the ministers out there. Do you think that that's going to play well for her, for her looking like the inclusive leader? Oh, without doubt at all. Uh, it will be a, a stark difference in style. Well, I think she, as Jim has rightfully said, has tried to address the key issues successfully in some respects with both people, unsuccessfully, I think. And time now, of course, will tell through the campaign whether people then, as Jim says, warms to her style mm. or, in fact, perceives Abbott as the objective or as the alternative, should I say. And, of course, the key in all of these things is Governments lose. Oppositions don't win predominantly. Mm. Hence, Rudd had to go. If he hadn't gone, Labor would definitely have lost. Mm. Well, that's a good point. And talking, I was thinking that the strategy around boat people was an interesting one for, for us to look at because she obviously decided that without a conversation, uh, it was going to run away from them. So she prompted it. But then she got a bit caught um, by what seemed to be some people described as a thought bubble that wasn't quite policy yet. So, Jim, do you think... Did, was it a mistake or has this been a good decision from her? As Barry has said, I think she had to deal with um, at least two major problems that were besetting Kevin Rudd's government. Uh, the question of the mining tax that I think she's successfully dealt with and the question of the asylum seekers. Where There's been a bit of a stumble, but nonetheless she has now positioned herself in a way that I think will cause a lot of... Uh, West Australians to feel far more comfortable yeah, with I, her I disagree position. with that. I, I, I think she's made a fundamental mistake, Jim, on the boat people. She was, you're right, she had to address it. Mm. But doing it as she did without approval from East Timor, I think she's lost on that issue clearly. Now, whether that's yeah. a vote turner in the big picture, time will tell. But Jim's saying he thinks she's overcome it. I don't think she has. But it's other issues that probably, she hopes now, will pre prevail. I think she's going to lose on that, and polling recently shows that Liberals are perceived to be better on that issue than Labor. Mm. But it then comes down to economic management, taxation, health and others. And time will tell, therefore, whether what she's lost here can be made up for over there. My perception is she probably will, but that depends on the campaign, mm. and campaigns, as Jim knows, anything can happen. That's right. And one thing, Jim, you're quite intimately involved in the health debate. Um, she'd surely be trying to get back to some of those key sort of, you know, labour um, issues where, she, where she's probably going to have a better win mm. than boat people. I think Julia Gillard had to deal with the, the big problems, which were not positives for labour. She's now dealt with them, and I think that enables her now to get back onto the positives. Uh, Health care is a big winner for the Labor Party. Mm. Um, education is a big winner for the Labor Party. The polling's all saying that. Now, I think having d spent time in troubled waters, she can now move on to uh, deal with these other issues because I think ultimately it's going to come down to a very interesting tussle between Tony Abbott and Julia Gillard. And I think it's a presidential style election. A presidential election. style election. And I think Tony Abbott is a bit too extreme for most people in Australia. What do you think? 
I don't think so. No, no. I, I, I personally like Tony Abbott. At this stage of the game, if there was an election today, you'd have to be backing, if you were a betting person, Julia Gillard. But I wouldn't write Tony Abbott off, mm. as Jim again knows, in a two-horse race and during a campaign. I've seen plenty of hiccups and through campaigns yes, that have yes. caused real problems. True. So it's a delicate balance. I think at the, at the moment she's probably got a nose in front. But I wouldn't write Abbott off by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, finally, I, I just want to look at Kevin Rudd, and he's over in Washington, and he's been very public. Although you know, maybe it's been a calculated decision to be away from the domestic media. But how destabilising would it be if the Labor Party does get back to have Kevin Rudd, who's probably still very angry at what happened, sitting in the cabinet? I think Julia Gillard's made the sensible and political decision leave him away because he's bad news politically at the moment whether you believe that or not as a person in a personal sense politically that's the smart move mm. longer term i think rudd should have resigned personally i think once you've been a leader then tomorrow he should go he's been a prime minister what else is he going to do i think he's trying to now shape a, a career for himself internationally and good luck to him but i yeah. don't think he'll end up being back in cabinet and if he did be a destabilizing influence i think julia gillard's done the right thing of saying have a break no doubt um, and if you do run and are elected, you'll be back in as a senior minister, as yeah. Barry and I both know. Yeah. You're not necessarily best of friends with everyone who sits around the Cabinet table. Uh, politics is about the fight for ideas, about the shape of society, and if you didn't have violent disagreements with your Cabinet colleagues, there's something wrong. Mm. And uh, uh, I think it's just a sign of maturity of uh, Cabinet ministers that they can work with people who might otherwise oppose them. Mm. But do you expect him to come back? Well, he's certainly saying he is, and full credit to Julia for saying there's a spot reserved for mm. you if you do. Mm. Yeah, but surely she's saying there's a spot reserved, but please don't come back. <laughs> I don't think he'll be back, as I said. All right, thank you both for your time. Thanks, Pleasure. Eliza.